the message is that you don't have to wait. And you don't have to wait to take final action. You should wait. Um, one, you can take those concrete practical actions that add up. You know, get involved in conservation activities, replanting of trees, um, take part in the beach cleanup, look for opportunities to engage in environmental protection, um, educate others in your household, go green. Um, also partner with others, find a mentor or volunteer who is working on climate action and who can um, you can learn from and actually take part in activities that they are you know implementing uh, and practical actions. Advocate to be part of climate change policy processes in your country or wherever you are. It is possible for you to set a climate change agenda for you with priorities for you. So I think that's a very important one. Help tell the stories. Tell the stories of what is happening in terms of where climate change impacts are being felt, how you are being affected, um, and what you can do or offer solutions. You know, um, research and innovate. There is so much happening now. And people are, you know, we know the problems, we're seeing what's happening with the heat waves, with hurricanes, we're getting impacts of sargassum all across the Caribbean. Um, be part of the technical solutions and help redesign the way people live and do business. Um, you know, that is more climate friendly. Um, for example, somebody recently um, uh, implemented a solution for turning the sargassum seaweed into fertilizer. So there are a lot of possibilities to do research um, and implement new solutions to help with the climate problems that we are having. What role do you have to play in addressing these issues? So, in my current role as a program associate for the UNDP, Working in collaboration with the National Ozone Unit, you wouldn't imagine that climate change is something that is generally a topic when looking at ozone layer and uh, refrigeration and air conditioning sector. But what I was, what I've been privy to the knowledge and the experience from this, I was actually able to realize that a lot of the contributions to greenhouse gas emissions come from cooling. So, for example, within the refrigeration and air conditioning sector, and I'm just quoting some stats here. 17% of total energy consumption in 2015 was from the heating, ventilation, um, heating, ventilation and air conditioning sector. We had 14% of electricity demand in the US was for air conditioning, 40% of electricity demand in Mumbai, and even 50% of electricity demand in hotels came from the rack sector. So we already know that true energy consumption, it well, true energy generation, it produces fossil fuels, and you have to generate more electricity electricity to meet demands. So you recognize that a large part of the electricity demand or the consumption comes from the refrigeration and air conditioning sector. So simply addressing our cooling needs can also contribute tremendously to a reduction in the greenhouse gas emissions, looking at more innovative ways. So within my role, I, as I mentioned, I work with the National, I work with the National Ocean Unit and we came out of a workshop last week on the Kigali Amendment and what it means for Caribbean countries. And the King Valley Amendment was basically an amendment to the Montreal Protocol that, would, that looked at reducing the consumption of HFCs, which are hydrofluorocarbons, which is a refrigerant that was now used to replace HCFCs in the air conditioning units. Now, although the Montreal Protocol looked at reducing ozone depleting substances and replacing them with less ODS ozone depleting substance uh, refrigerants, HFC however, was found to have high global warming potential. So although within an AC unit, the amount of HFC is small, the global warming potential is, trim, is, is, is very large in comparison to carbon dioxide. So if any of this HFC leaks into the environment, be it when an AC, if your AC has a leak, for example, or if your technician vents the air conditioning unit when he's servicing it, vents the refrigerant, that contributes tremendously to the amount of uh, global warming that happens globally. Wow. I like the idea of hold your corner. Hold your corner. Because yeah. at the end of the you know, hold your corner, play your part. Okay. Because sometimes we are overwhelmed with the idea that, you know, I'm just one person, what can I do? But if you do the best within your own sphere, yeah. if everyone wants to think like that, do the best within their own sphere, naturally it will spill over. 
be it by others looking at you, looking at your actions and being motivated to do so themselves, or even your individual contributions, because it's, at the end of the day, it is the sum of our individual contributions that results in the whole action.